600 million years ago, during the early evolution of animals, there were three primary habitats for life. The open sea, the surface of the sea floor, and the muddy substrate there. Some of the earliest animals buried in the soft sea floor mud. They were segmented worms, as shown by fossil records of worm tunneling tracks. These early creatures have evolved to make up a highly successful line of invertebrate life called phylum annelidia. Annelids are heterotrophic multicellular eukaryotes in the kingdom Animalia. They are found all over the world and have evolved into countless species with many different sizes, shapes, and colors in order to fill a wide variety of ecological niches. Annelids, such as earthworms, leeches, and sea worms, are all invertebrates that do not have a hard skeleton. Instead, they have soft, long bodies made up of similar parts called segments. Internal body walls called septa separate annelids into many different repeating parts. Segmentation of the annelid body allows for greater freedom of movement and greater complexity of body organization. Inside, the body shows repetition of organs and body parts, like hearts, muscles, and parts of the coelium, with the intestines and main blood cells passing through the segments. Annelids can be broken down into three distinct groups that all have similar characteristics. Marine segmented worms are members of the class Polychaeta, the largest and most diverse group of annelids that almost all live in ocean habitats. Due to the many different selective pressures found in ocean habitats, Polychaetas have a wide variety of forms and color schemes. Some examples are bristle worms, beach worms, and tube worms. The second group is the most well known of all annelids. Class Oligochaeta. These annelids, like earthworms and some freshwater worms, are scavengers that break down organic matter found in soil. The final group is the most feared by humans all over the world. The leeches are class Hirudina. Leeches have suckers at both ends of the body, and unlike other annelids, its segments are not separated internally. With a variety of different types of annelids to fill numerous ecological niches all over the planet, these creatures have adapted many different feeding techniques. Some types of marine worms, like the tube worm, are filter feeders. These annelids stay in one place and gather food from the water around them by trapping tiny bits of food floating in the water with their special food-gathering tentacles. Others, like earthworms and other marine annelids, are decomposers because they eat detritus, which is made up of plants and animals that are rotting away. Finally, some annelids collect nutrients by being parasites. These annelids which are mainly leeches, attach onto or inside a larger living being, then feed on its blood. A leech's victim can be any invertebrate or vertebrate, from snails and earthworms to fish and mammals. Annelids have a complete mouth-to-anus digestive tract with muscular walls. This allows digestive tract movements to be independent of body movements. In most annelids, there are usually two fluid systems, the coleum and the circulatory system, and both, if present, are involved in the excretion of waste products. To achieve this excretion, there are a pair of organs that remove metabolic waste from an invertebrate's body, found in each segment that are much like our kidneys. Reproduction in annelids can occur in many different ways. In earthworms, leeches, and other annelids that live on land, eggs are laid that hatch into young annelids that already look like they're adults. A characteristic that sets these annelids apart from all other organisms is the fact that they are hermaphrodites, which means that each individual has both male and female reproductive organs in the same body. During sexual intercourse, the two organisms that meet up cross-fertilize each other's eggs by collecting sperm from their partner. Underground, fertilized eggs develop inside a cocoon, and after a few weeks or months, the young hatch and burrow into the ground. This process allows each annelid to then go on and create their own generation of worms in order to increase the chances of offspring survival. Marine worms reproduce sexually. A male and a female from a species meet and release their sperm and eggs into the sea at about the same time. When an egg and a sperm join, a larva is formed and begins to grow. Over time, the larva's body begins to change by growing its body segments and looking more like its parents every day. Some annelids live for only a few weeks, but others live for a few years or more. Scientists have even found one kind of tube worm that could be 250 years old. This tube worm was recently discovered growing on the seafloor near North America. Annelids live in every ecosystem in the world, except for those found in the Arctic and Antarctic. The key for annelids' survival is that their environment is moist because annelids breathe through their skin. 
Oxygen in the air or in the water dissolves in the mucus of an animal's body, passing through the skin and into the bloodstream. It then gets carried to all the worm's parts. Antlers that live in fresh water can crawl or swim near the bottom or burrow into the muddy banks of ponds, lakes, and streams. Land antlers generally find ecological niches where rainfall is plentiful in order to stay moist and living. Life in the sea can be successful in a variety of different ways. Some sea worms, such as scale worms, live on the sea floor where they hunt other invertebrates to eat and live in burrows, just like most land annelids. Interestingly enough, some sea worms build tubes to live in. These tube worms make hard tubes that they stick to rocks, corals, or other hard surfaces. The annelids are considered to have evolved in the sea, perhaps from an ancestral flatworm evolved through the trophoric larva, the characteristic early stage of marine annelids. The vast number of species is a result of extreme adaptive radiation as annelids entered each environment many millions of years ago. Since they were one of the largest organisms at the time, they could experiment with appearance and certain features in order to fill ecological niches. Some closely related organisms are other invertebrates like snails, slugs, as well as mollusks. Annelids are eaten by a wide variety of organisms, so over time they have adapted many features and techniques to survive. The most common type of defense for an annelid is the bristles sticking out of their skin. Some annelids, such as earthworms and tube worms, have short bristles, called setae, to help grip the sides of their burrows. These bristles are like little anchors and make it harder for a predator to pull the worm out of its burrow or tube. Other annelids, such as the fireworm, have long spiky bristles to protect them. These tiny glass needles can prick a predator's skin and inject a very painful poison. Another key adaptation for survival in annelids is the ability to hide and camouflage. Whenever trouble or danger arises, some annelids, like earthworms, burrow into the ground by coordinating two sets of muscles. Others, like the tube worm, stay inside their tubes all the time and only stretch part of their body out of the tube to feed. Many of these worms are sensitive to sudden light changes, jerking back into their tubes in response to what could be the shadow of a predator. Sometimes, a predator will attack an annelid and bite off part of its body. Amazingly, many are able to survive these attacks and regenerate the part of the body that is missing. This is possible because the segments of an annelid work independently from one another and contain all the necessary organs for survival. For example, tube worms often regenerate missing tentacles or even a head. If they lose an important part of the body, like a head, they quickly regenerate a new one within a few days so they can eat again. Through evolution, variation, the many different ecological niches that they fill, and the selective pressures within them, annelids have evolved into quite the diverse and sensational phylum. In fact, it is believed that there are between 13,000 and 20,000 different species of annelid on the planet. That's thousands of different, amazing, and interesting types of organisms that help our planet by breaking down organic waste and excreting nutrients into the soils of the ecosystems on Earth. For that, annelids, we humans thank you.